So we're going to resume our tutorial, and we last left it where we had successfully added an armature to this character. One of the things that we'll see is as we look at this character, we have a number of images, as we recall. And if I go over here into the image editor and look at some of these images, you'll see they're quite large. If I go click tool, then image. They're 10K. This is a huge image, and it's really too big, and I want to resize this. And so how do we do this? Well, last time we saved it, we saved it with this external data automatically packing a blend. So that means this image file does no longer live on the disk where we imported it from. Now it lives inside this blend. And if we go ahead and say, use file from current directory, create when necessary, we're going to actually take this image, export it out, and I'm going to put it into a folder called textures, right? This is the folder where we had our people. This is our man one. This is where the blend file was. And in this textures folder, is this image and that's where the file ends up and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do that for each one of these there's the normal map and there is the specular map there they're all exported now i'm going to open them up in my image editor i'm going to resample them to something smaller and then save them back be right back okay now we've resampled all of the images and now we're back in blender and what I'll do is I'll just go to each one of these images and I'll reload them. So that's Alt R and you'll see they come in smaller. That's, that's a 2K image, male, Alt R, again, another 2K image and R spec, Alt R, another 2K image. And then with that done, I'm going to power save this. And now I have all of those images now stored automatically into this file. Now I'm ready to proceed with animating. So before we start animating, we of course need to change this bottom area to the timeline. I'm gonna set this animation up for 150 frames because that's where I'm gonna set a loop. That's 25 frames per second. That would be about six seconds of a loop. The other thing is I wanna get these bones so they don't quite look in front of the person but i still want to be able to see them and select them so i'll select this object and i'll go over here and under viewport display and the object i'm going to set this to be wire and now i can see them as wires so next i'll zoom in to his head and i'm going to animate it first pretty much like ian hubert says animate the head then the torso then the legs and have one follow the other follow the other so i'll start off all the way at frame one and I'll set this to automatically record my keyframes and I'll click on my armature and I'll go into pose mode and I'll select the top and I'll hit Alt R, which resets it and it puts a keyframe there. Then I'm going to go all the way to the end, Alt R. So I know that the first and last are exactly the same. So we'll go back to the beginning and let's go around 10. And now I just press the R button twice and I can start to animate him looking looking around there you go something like this and because we have this automatically selected we're automatically creating these keyframes and that's probably pretty good i can hit the space bar and i can look and see what's going on see if there's anything that's a little too much eh, might be a lot of extra motion there i might want to simplify that a little bit and i'll do that next yeah, it seems like it's not bad. I think these first movements are quite large. So I'll go right there and maybe move them back a little bit. And as Ian says, you know, sometimes you've got some kind of quicker head movements than you might have before. So you might want, you know, play around with that as well. Okay, and I think that's pretty good. Notice one thing I can do, if I want to freeze a place, like I can click here, and I can just say, I want to freeze that to like four, four or five frames. I can say Control C, Control V, and it'll give me this line, and that'll basically have him kind of stay quiet there. And if I want to just adjust this a little bit, I can just hit the RR and just move it just a tiny bit, just so it's not completely still, but it kind of gives you the idea that it just kind of stays in a given spot. So that's how that works. Moves, stays, moves, stays a little bit, and then down. Okay, now that we've done that, 
we're going to go ahead and we're going to try and animate the torso to follow this. So I'll click on the torso and I'll do the exact same thing I did before. Go to the first frame, Alt-R, last frame, Alt-R, and then we'll go in between. And we'll just try and, as he's looking over here, I might have him turn just a little bit. And as he looks over here, make him turn that way a little bit. He looks back, move it back a little bit. Now he's looking up, might make him move back a little bit. And see how that works. I guess it's always a good idea to also look at it from the side too to see what's going on and make sure that we're not doing anything weird there. Yeah, that back looks a little weird. So we're going back a little too far, it looks like, when it looks up right there. So let's take let's select that and let's move that one. Yeah, well, that's not gonna work. Let's go. Rx. There you go. Just tilt it up just a little bit like that. So there, let's see what that looks like. Okay, good. Go back to the front view. Now we've got that done. Let's move all the way out and let's go ahead and we'll script the legs in the bottom part of the body. So we'll select this bone. Again, Alt-R. The first frame, let's go to 150. All R. Now we've got it set so that it will repeat correctly. And then let's watch it. And as we move it, okay, so we're on this side. We're going to move it over here. So I might just turn them a little bit that way. And then move back this way. Turn them a little bit that way. And this way. Maybe I'll tilt them a little bit. And then let's see what that looks like. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now we have our character rigged and animated. So what's next? There's one more thing we need to do, and that is we need to take this animation and make it cycle. So what do I mean by that? So I've added a lot more frames in the 150. And if I hit the space bar to play this back, you'll notice that once we hit 150, our animation completely stops. So what we'd like to do is we want it to continue to repeat over and over again. So how do we do that? Well, let's go right into our armature and let's select it and go into pose mode and let's select everything. And then we'll go over here into the graph editor and we'll come in here and we'll select everything by hitting the A key. And then we'll go into the channel under extrapolation mode. We will use make cyclic. And once we've done that, I'm going to tab out of this and go into the object mode. Now, as you can see, we're past 150 and we're continuing the animation. So that's something that you want to make sure and do. Okay, so let's show our characters in action a little bit here. I've got this new Eevee pool water that I'm creating. And I'm going to add a couple characters to this scene to make it look more interesting. And then I'm going to animate it really quick using Quick Shot. So let's go into Kid Ops first. And you'll see that we have these people collection that I've created. And I've got two of these guys. There's male one and male 021. This is male one's the one we just did. So let's we'll select the ground plane here. We'll turn auto scale off and we'll add the insert. And we'll drag them around to where we want them. So I'm going to stick them over here like this. And then I'm going to go over and grab the next character right here, this one. And I will add him right over here. And I'll RZ to rotate him around just a little bit. Okay, now that I have this done, I will turn off my overlays and hit the zero key on the numpad to go into my camera view. And there's my camera view. And if you see, if I hit the space bar, you can see our characters are animating nicely. They're just moving around subtly and the water's moving too. So we'll go back to the beginning and I'll jump into quick shot real quick and I'll set up the first shot. And the first shot is... Let's actually first go and say uh, lock camera to view. So let's set the first shot up. So it's going to be something like this. We'll start with something like, like here. Add shot. And now I'm going to move it up so we can see down into the pool. Something like so. And if I hold the control key down when I hit the out button, I've got it. And so hit the space bar and you'll see that we have 
a nice camera move with the characters moving slowly as we go. Now it's not rendering at full resolution because of the fact that there's a lot of polygons in there, but when we render out, it'll, it'll look great. Okay, so next what I want to do is I'm going to create another shot. And this shot, I'm going to start over here a little bit with our guy's face, something like this, maybe even a little bit lower, something like so, add shot. And that's our in spot and then our out. Again, we'll move over, maybe we'll move over something like this, like so, which is this one character. And control key down, hit the out. So hit the space bar and we'll see what that looks like. That's our move for that. So I can keep adding these shots on and on and on and you get the idea. And then all I have to do is just hit the render button and we'll render the animation because we've already got 201 frames in this scene. So let's take a look and see what that looks like. And here's our final animation. And as you can see, it worked out pretty good. I did some compositing in Blender's node editor. And of course you can see that it turned out different from the original. Overall though, I think it took perhaps maybe five minutes to render 200 frames. So that's one of the big advantages of using Eevee in Blender for rendering. Okay, well that's about it. Thanks so much for watching and uh, I'll see you guys online. Thank <laughs> you.